Likute Torah Dvorim Daf Dalid, the Maimur Viadata Hayoim. Viadata Yoim Ashavesilava Vechavagoy Mer, you should know today and bring it down into your heart. But we have to understand that a few psukim right before the Pasuk Viadata Yoim, just a few psukim before then in Veschanon, there's the Pasuk Ataharesa Ladas Kia Vayoli Kimein and Movades. You were shown, Ataharesa, you were shown Kia Vayoli Kim. So then why after we were shown, why did this then say Vyadata Yoim Shavesilvecha Kevayulikim? If we were shown it already, Ataresa, why do we need the Vyadata? Also, what's the Pshat Hayom? Today you should know. And in order to understand this, the Alter Rebbe prefaces by saying that the order of the Psukim as the written verse Chanan has a very interesting thing that comes out from it. Right after the giving of the Torah in Parshas Ves Chanan, the Aser Sadibris, the way Moshe Rabbeinu said them, after Matan Torah, where they saw God face to face and the Jewish people themselves heard the Ten Commandments from Hashem, and they said to Moshe that if we keep hearing from God, we're going to die, please you be the intermediary, and Hashem agreed that Moshe Rabbeinu should be the intermediary, like the Pasuk then goes on to say, hey, Tivu Kol they're asking for good. They're saying good. So therefore Hashem goes on to say that they should all go to their tents. And you, Moshe, stay with me. And then the Pesukim continue, V'zois ha-mitzvah laseis ba'aretz. And this mitzvah I'm going to give you now, you have to do in the land. Eretz v'az l'chol v'dvash, the land of Eretz Yisrael Pashtus, which is the land of milk and honey. And then after it says, V'zois ha-mitzvah, this is the mitzvah you need to do in the land. Afterwards it says, Shema Yisrael avai lekeinu avai echad v'hafta. So it comes out that the order of the Pesukim is that the first mitzvah, right after the Ten Commandments, after Sarah Sadibis from Moshe's mouth, is Shema Yisrael. But the order of things is, is that Hashem says, after Matan Torah, Hashem says to Moshe to tell the Jewish people, V'zoysa mitzvah lasis barts, this is the mitzvah you should do in the land. And then Shema Yisrael. Right after Sarah Sadibis is Shema Yisrael, this is the mitzvah you have to do in the land. But the Altar Rebbe says, what do you mean this is the mitzvah you have to do in the land? In Eretz Yisrael. Parsha Shema is Chavis Aguf. The mitzvah of reciting Kriyashma is, is on the gavra, is on the person. It's Noyig in Eretz Yisrael and Chutz Laaretz. Why does it say Ba'aretz? Kriyashma is obligatory everywhere. Ulahav and Kol Zet Sarach Lahakdim. In order to understand this, we have to preface Bir Inyan Das V'Inyan Emuna. What's the Inyan of Das as opposed to, compared to the Inyan of Emuna? Faith and reason. Now, throughout the generations, there have been debates throughout Jewish history about should one be approaching God with faith or reason, with emuna or rational understanding. And there are many different opinions back and forth, but the way Hasidus paskins is that das and emuna are two separate mitzvahs. As on one hand it says by das, like Dovod Melech said to Shlomo Melech as he was about to pass away, das elekei avicha, know the God of your fathers. And as Hasidus explains, what do you mean? If, if David Melech wanted Shlomo Melech to know the God of your fathers, so tell him. Tell him what there is to know. But rather, must be that David Melech is telling Shlomo Melech to do something that can't be given to you. In other words, it can't be given to Shlomo Melech. He has to do it himself. And that's Das. Meaning Das v'hasoga mamish, like the Shlo explains, to really, really perceive, have a real Das, not just a Muna, but to have Das in Elokus. And that Shlomo Melech could only do by himself, as we're going to learn. No matter how much information you have, Das could only be done by yourself. So on one hand, we have the sinning of Das. On the other hand, it says, Vayaminu b'havaya, that they had a moon in Havaya, by Chris Yamsu, by, by Azio, right before Az Yosher, Vayaminu b'havaya, that they had a moon. By the way, parenthetically, the Altar is going to make reference to this later also, later also in the Mimer, and in Torah or Parshas B'Shalach, Alter explains it, that you see right away from here, it says, Vayar Yisrael Asiyad HaGadol Asha Asa Hashem B'Mitzrayim, that Hashem saw, uh, I'm sorry, that they saw the great hand of Hashem that He had in Egypt, meaning they saw Vayar Yisrael, and then it says, Vayaminu B'Havaya, that Amun in Havaya, after they saw the Yad HaGadol So it means even though they saw Hashem, then it still says, Vayaminu B'Havaya. So we see that even after Atarese, you could still have an inin of a, that, that there's still necessary the inin of a muna. Ba'inin, in order to understand, as the Alter Rebbe says, an extremely fundamental idea to all of Yiddishkeit, that that which the world calls a muna, what the world usually thinks of as a muna, which is to believe that God vitalizes everything and He created everything from nothing to something, that's a mistake. To think that that's a muna, for one doesn't need a muna for that. 
the idea that God is the soul of the world, that God's light fills the world and vitalizes, gives life to the whole world, and He created everything, that one is able to actually see, to have a vision of that aspect of Elokus. Even though seemingly one can't see Elokus with one's flesh eyes, but it's as if one sees. What the Altarab is going to explain now, which is also find, found towards the end of Tanya Perak Membeis, is that what does it mean, ki'ilu raya, that there's such a thing as what, what's called ri'iyas ene seichel al yidei ri'iyas ene basar, which means that through visualizing, through looking at something, through seeing something with your flesh eyes, your mind is also able to have a vision. The, the eyes of your mind are able to see something deeper than what your eyes are seeing. Meaning what? Al-Turabba brings a moshal, mipsar ech from my flesh I see God. Ech zadafka, I see God from my flesh. In other words, by understanding how one looks at my own flesh, mipsari, ech I will then be able to visualize God, have a visualization of Hashem. And how is that? Just like by my flesh. I f- the, it's not that I believe that I'm alive. I feel the chayas of my body. I feel that I have a nefesh. I'm, I have das that I have a nefesh. It's not a muna. I, have, I feel it. I know it. I might not have yidir samahus. I might not know what my soul is. I don't, like the Maral says, how can we know God, what God is, if we don't know what our own soul is? So I don't know what my soul is. I can't explain it. But it's not that I believe I'm alive. I actually am able to feel my life inside of me. I'm able to see that without the vitality of my soul, the body by itself, a body in and of itself, is like a doimim, is like an inanimate object. Like, and actually, the Tzemach Tzedek writes in Derech Mitzvah and Mitzvah Samanas Alakus, the first two prokim of Manas Alakus is essentially the main idea of this Maimar Vedat Yom. And over there, the way that Tzemach Tzedek says it, is that without the Chayas, without the vitality in the body, the body would be Kamayat Samosu Basu Munochim B'Kadeira. Like meat and bones in a pot on the fire. Like a pot full of bones and meat. That's what our body would be without the vitality. It would just be like a thing full of bones and meat. And so I see, like when I'm looking at somebody else that's alive. Forget about me for a second. When I visualize somebody else, do you see their vitality? Well, your physical eyes only see their body. Your physical eyes is only able to see the body, but through Reyes Ene Basar, through your physical eyes seeing the person alive, you're able to see life force in the person. It's not that you believe, you see that they're alive. You could see the difference between a person that's alive and a person that's dead. Says the Alter Rebbe, Kach Ech that's this method is how one comes to visualize and see God, that when I see the world is like one huge body from the earth till the first Rakia is 500 years, etc. And all the worlds and all the Rakiyam are all like a big body. Even the spiritual things that were created, angels and souls, they're all like a body within which is the vitality of Ein Sof. Ein Sof is vitalizing and bringing to creation everything every moment. And therefore when I look at the world, just like when it comes to the soul and the body, I see that the world is Lebedic. I see that there's highest in the world. I see that there are birds flying and trees growing and people moving. I see there's a vitality, there's a highest to the world. And that is Elokus, that's Hashem's light. And this type of visualization is what Yeshaya Hanavi means when he says in chapter 40, Sumar Menechem Uru Mi pick up your eyes and see who created all of this. You see that there's a vitality within this world. And this seeing, this idea, this knowing is as if Mamish one sees it with the mind's eye through the fleshy eyes seeing it. And that's why the Pasuk says, Echza, that I could have a vision of God by looking at the world that's alive. And therefore, this is not called Emuna in Lashon Kodesh. This is called Das. Das is not just knowing something superficially. Das, like it says in Tanya chapter 3 and 42, is Lashon Hakar Vahar Gosha, that I actually am able to feel it with my mind. Like I feel that I'm alive. I don't just know that I'm alive. I know to the extent that I could feel it. That's called Har Gosha. And Hakara means that I've come to such a deep recognition. Hakara, I recognize, I understand this thing, that as soon as I think about it, it right away has an emotional effect on me. Like, for instance, when I say the word Holocaust, I right away have an emotional reaction because I understand so deeply what this is through Das. Hakara, that comes from Das. This is also explained, by the way, in Kuncha Satvila, Parakei, the Rebbe Shab explains there the Indian of Das. 
that it's a moich b'fnei atzmoi, that it's not understanding, it's actually being able to feel with the mind, to know something so deeply in one's heart that it's as if you feel it in the mind and, and, and you have an emotional identification with it. That's Hakar Vargasha. And then the Alter adds another thing that's inherent in the word Das. Besides how deep you go into it, it's also how consistent you are. Das is also that one is mamik, one goes so deep in one's intellectual, is boinunos, one's mind's connection to God, that one doesn't have hesach das. And one always remembers and never forgets, never takes it out of one's heart. And that's what also, that's das, meaning that you connect to it. Like it says in Tanya chapter 3, you connect to it so deeply and for so long, that it'll have an effect. Mashenkin, if you just have a hearer, when you just like have a hearer about God, just a fleeting thought about God, that's not going to do anything. Fleeting thoughts here, hearum, don't cause any real change in a person for Hashem, because here is lav kadibur dummy. Thinking is not even like speaking, so it doesn't have a real effect on the soul. But das does. Das changes a person. All this aspect of visualizing Elokus that we've been talking about until now, Das and Hargosha, is only Bechines Memale Kol Almen. It's only the aspect of God's light that fills all worlds. That, that we're learning that the light of God that's within reality that I could visualize with the mind's eye through the fleshy eye seeing it, that's all the God, light of God that's within the world, the contracted light of God of Mamale Kol Almen, which is also why the Zohar calls Mamale Kol Almen Alma Dezgalia, the revealed world, the revealed aspect of godliness. And it was like, it's actually written in Tzavah Sarivosh that the Baal Shem Tov says that bear in mind that you're seeing the Shekhinah when you look at physical objects. Whatever you see, you're seeing the Shechina. You're seeing Mamale Kol Amen, but it's only Hashem's contracted light of Mamale Kol Amen. After many Tzimtzumim is there this light that could become the soul of the world. But then, of course, there's the higher, some more essential level of Hashem called Seiv of Kol Amen, as God encompasses all worlds. And that this level is what it says, Ani Shanisi, that I have Hashem have not changed. Atu Kedem Shnevo Elam, Atu Ma'ach Shnevo Elam, Hashem is no change at all. The worlds don't have an effect on God and don't change His utter unity. The reason being because God infinitely surpasses and transcends the parameters of all worlds. That that creates all worlds and that that becomes the Alma Galia, the revealed aspect of Shem that becomes the soul of the world is all just Hashem's Malchus, a ray and a glimmer from the mid of Hashem's Malchus. Baruch Shem Kivoyed Malchusay. A ray of a ray of Hashem's Malchus, not even Hashem's Malchus itself. We know Malchus is the lowest of the ten spheres. It's the most contracted aspect of Hashem's light. And yet even from that Malchus, the world doesn't receive its vitality. Rather, a ray and a glimmer from that. And that's what it means. Before God had created the world, even Midas Malchusay was Levad, was Nizgav Levad, they transcended worlds. Even Midas Malchusay was too high, too much revelation for the solar system and the galaxies to be created. For all of reality to be created, be created is only a ray and a glimmer of His name. And therefore, what transcends all worlds is called Seiv of Kol Almin, before which all the worlds have no Tfisis Mokam are insignificant. Because the way that Seiv of Kol Almin, even though Seiv of Kol Almin is found in the world, of course, Seiv of Kol Almin doesn't mean that Hashem surrounds, like it says in Tanya chapter 48, it doesn't mean that God is like a circle, Chas It doesn't mean He surrounds the world literally. Of course, God is here as well. But Seiv of Kol Almin is not within the worlds. The worlds are insignificant to, to, to Seiv of Kol Almin. It's not like the soul fills the body. That's true about Mamale Kol Almin, but not Seiv of Kol Almin. When the soul fills the body, the soul gets affected by the body heat and cold, whatever the body's going through, the soul feels. Why? Because the soul is mamish within the body. They're interconnected. But before Hashem, even though He's found here down below in Elam Haza, just like above, but He's not nitfas begeder mokum. He's not within the parameters. He's not, he's not trapped within the parameters of time and space. He's within time and space, but not trapped according to their parameters. So even though Hashem encompasses and transcends all the worlds, He's found within the worlds, just not within the confines of the worlds. 
And that's what it means, like we say, Nishtabach v'ha Kodesh b'shamayim uva'aretz, because he's Kodesh Muvdal, because Seyv of Kol Alman is so infinitely transcends all of reality, therefore he's Shav Mamish, he's equally found Ba'aretz Mitochas, just like b'shamayim imal. That's HaKadosh B'Shamayim of Aretz. So HaKadosh B'Shamayim of Aretz is Seyv of Kol Alman, that because he's Kadosh, because he's so removed from worlds, therefore he's B'Shamayim of Aretz equally. Like Hasidim used to say, as Dorten Vu Edelkeit is Nishkan Kli, Grubkeit is Nishkan Stira. Those levels of Hashem's infinite aspects that for which even Edelkeit is not a vessel, meaning there can be there can be no vessel for Seva Kalama, no matter how Edel. That level of Elokus, which can't fit in any vessel, is Grubkeit is not is not a stira. It's found even in garbage dumps and things worse than that. Because he's Kaddish, therefore he's equally Bashamaim of Aretz. And in parentheses, the Alter Rebbe adds that the right there in Yishtabach, before we say Kodesh B'Shamayim Mavaretz, it says, HaMelech HaGodol V'Kodesh B'Shamayim Mavaretz. Melech HaGodol is Mamalek Olamen. His Pashtas Gedulas Malchusei, the spreading forth of the greatness of Hashem's kingship. L'Gedulas Ein Cheker, for which there's no investigation, it's infinite. And it says that there are millions and millions of angels. That's HaMelech HaGodol. Melch Gadol is Mamalek Kolamin, and then Hakadosh B'Shemayim Var. It's a save of Kolamin, before which the worlds don't cause any change at all. Just like before Hashem, when created anything, when Hashem is the only thing that existed, so too now, because Hashem transcends all reality, and all reality Bichlal doesn't really give over what Hashem is and is an infinite light. And therefore, this aspect of save of Kolamin, you can't approach with Das and Hargasha. Seichel and Hasoga can't comprehend how even though God created every blade of grass and is within every rock, yet there's, He doesn't change at all and He's exactly the same like before the world was created. We can't understand that fully. That's what Emunah is. To have Emunah that Hashem transcends worlds and before Him darkness is the same as light. In other words, what I'm able to perceive the world and the locus that's within the, within the world, that's Das Vahargosha. I could feel that. I could feel the godliness within everything. I could feel the Chaya Saliki. But that's all Hashem's contracted light. That's only a ray of a glimmer of Hashem's Malchus that's bringing about the whole universe and reality and all upper and spiritual worlds. But Seiv of Kolamin, anything that I could understand, any greatness of God, any expansiveness of God, that's all just the ray of light. So what's Hashem Himself? What's Seiv of Kolamin? That you need a muna for. We have no idea. We can't comprehend it. No thought could comprehend it. So for that level of seva kolamin, that's what you need a muna for. Even if vayari so siyada gedoyla, even if you the, here's the altar makes reference to this at the end of his bays that even when you see hayada vayari so siyada gedoyla, you see Hashem manifesting mamish with your physical eyes. Still ve'aminu b'havaya. You still need a moon in havaya because God transcends anything that one could experience of God. So what is Seyv Kol Alman? That we have a moon and we have no idea. Ois gimel v'hi neksiv shchan eretz u'rei a live within the land. U'rei a moon, which the simple meaning of this is be nourished by your faith. It's like a promise, but the deeper meaning is that it's a verb, it's a commandment. U'rei a moon, you have to pasture, you have to cultivate your amuna. You have to dwell in Oretz and make your amuna bigger. Meaning even though amuna we learned until now is not the same as Das, but that aspect that you have amuna in, that aspect of Hashem that you have amuna, the amuna that's in Seva of Kol Alman has to be so affixed within the heart of a person, also in a way of Das and Argosha as if you see it. In other words, the idea of Seva of Kol Alman, one has to cultivate and pasture the amuna that one has in Hashem's infinite essence has to be so strong that it has the same certainty. It's as if you saw it also. Of course, when you see something, there's no greater certainty in, than that. So this amun and Seyv of Kolaman has to be so felt within the mind that it's as if you're able to see it as well. That's how certain, that's how deep it is and how, how deep of an, of an impression it has on you. Just like this is what a talk is going to happen. Why is Amuna called Aretz? Because it's the lowest level. It's the first level. Just like the land is the lowest thing. So to Amuna is the lowest level because there's no revelation. Amuna doesn't have any revelation with inside you. It doesn't change your intellect and emotions. 
And that's notes, Tchilas and Besoifan, that the Tchilas and the highest level of Hashem of Seva Kolaman is Dafka Besoifan, the lowest level of Amuna. But in the future, that's going to be Malah Haaretz, it's going to be filled with Deas Hashem, that there'll be a Karva Gosh as if we seeing God's infinite light as well. Like it says, Venigla Kveda Vai Viroko Basar Yachtov, we're going to see Hashem Mamish, and we're learning now that that means we're going to see Seva Kolaman as well. And how do we do that? How do we even now have a taste of this cultivating the Amuna to the extent that it'll be as if we see Sev of Kolam and now it's through the Avoid of Torah Mitzvahs. That's what causes the Amuna to be bigger, greater, so to speak. And the Atub is now going to explain because what Torah Mitzvahs are, are Hamshachas of Sev of Kolam. The world, the universe that we see and experience, that's Mamala Kolam. But Torah Mitzvah has in its save of Kolaman, like it says in Tanya in chapter 4, 23 and 46. Torah Mitzvah's draw down save of Kolaman, and that's why the Alter Rebbe learns here that, that a, a, about Torah Mitzvah is what it says, Nas Adam Mitzal Menukid Musenu, that even Torah Hashem says, let's make Torah in the form, in our form, like the form of man. Because there's the Ramach Mitzvah, the 248 positive Mitzvahs, are Ramach Ivarn the Malka, the 248 limbs of the king, Adam Ha'elian. Which means 248 amshachas of Seva Kalam. And why are they all called limbs? Just like a limb of a body. When you hold somebody's limb, you're holding on to their whole being. You're pulling their whole being towards you. So the 248 positive mitzvahs are limbs of the king, mean they're all drawing down Hashem's essential Seva of Kalam. And Baderach Klal, these 248 mitzvahs are split into three ways of right, left, and the middle, which is Torah Vedig Mils Chasadim. Torah is the middle, is the names of God. That's why it's called Kaira Bater. Like when you call somebody by their name, Kaira Bater, which, of course, the simple meaning is to read the Torah. But as it says in Tanya in chapter, chapter 40, Kaira Bater also means to call God by way of Torah, because Torah is Hashem's name. That's the middle line. Then the right line of Gemilas Chasad, the Mitzdaka. You know why that's Amshach of Sev of Kol Alman? Because Tzedaka is a person down here below giving life to a shuffle to somebody lowly and that Asuzdala Sata has an awakens in Asuzdala Ela that just like you give life to somebody lowly, you lower yourself to, to a shuffle to va- vitalize him and give him life. So to save of that's the Usdala Ela that brings that save of Kol Amen will descend and be mashpil itself to give vitality to us down here. So that's also Amshach of Seviv. And Aveda, which is the side of the left, that's Korbanis is also a, a hamshach of sevev because by the fire of the carbon being burned up down here below it becomes included in the supernal Aisha Lamaila of sevev and of course bizman when tefillah is instead of korbanis we have all sorts of things that Chazal put in the Seder at tefillah to make us want Hashem to the extent that we want that we're burned up in a fire for save of Kolam and then that draws down save into us which is then, for instance I'll be giving examples in davening then we say Baruch Sha'amar and Pesuki de Zimra to cause that fire in our heart to become much bigger that we meditate that Baruch Sha'amar v'haya Elam, meaning with one mimer just by like imagine just saying one word that's how much it took for God to create all worlds and then he then s- split it up into nine other mamores and so to the meditation of the Hallelujah Kenizgav Shemay Levade that Hashem's name meaning Malchus is also transcends reality Rakhoidev Zivoy Eretz V'Shemayim there's only a ray and a glimmer of a glimmer that's on heaven and earth <clears throat> But Vayarim Karen La'amay, the Karen, which means the principle, meaning Atmos is La'amay, is to Bnei Yisrael, Am Kreve, that Hashem gives His essence to Bnei Yisrael. And just like this, other examples of Psukim that are all about making the fire in the heart grow bigger. And through that, that draws down, save of Chemaim upon him, upon him, that also draws down, save of Kol Almin, that the Amuna, that would until now I had Amuna, but by davening and learning and Torah, all these things, a Tzayv Kalman is drawn down to make that the Amuna should be affixed and so deeply felt in the heart and the soul of a person that it's as if you could also see Tzayv of Kalman. And now the altar of Atayt is up the Pesukim, how he began the beginning of the Mimer. That the order of the Pesukim is Ven Vaschanan, is that right after the Bnei Yisrael, so to speak, So Hashem at Aseris Adibris, it then says, V'zois HaMitzvah Laseis Ba'aretz, this mitzvah do in the Aretz, which we're now learning, of course, Aretz is Amuna, and Eretz Zovas Chalav Udvash, then it says the Aretz that's full of milk and honey, and then it's a Shema Yisrael. 
In other words, Shema Yisrael is how you do the Zaysa Mitzvah to do Baratz and you get to the land of Milkan. Honey, honey through Shema Yisrael. What does that mean? Here the Altar of Taiches up the Pasuk Shema Yisrael as follows. Parsha Shema Yisrael means that Havaya, which is Seiv of Kol Alman, which until now is only Elikeinu, that we have Amuna, Bechinas Amuna Levada. Havaya Elikeinu means we only have Amuna in Havaya, but it should be Havaya Echod. Echod, of course, is <clears throat> the Ches is the seven Rakim and the land, and the and the Dalit is the four directions, and the Aleph is Hashem. That what until now was only in a way of emuna should be begili in all of the whole world to the extent that it'll be mamish like das and hargosha and save of kol alman as well, and this tight the Alter Rebbe is based on he says in parentheses what it says from the Preitz Chaim of the Arizal that havaya echad is hamshachas das elyon, so usually we say then see this havaya echad means how everything is connected to Hashem here havaya echad is. The idea that is drawn down into a person, das in Havai Lekeinu, in Seiv of Kol Alman. And when this is drawn down into a person's heart, das Dar Gosh, in Seiv of Kol Alman, that will cause the Bittel V'yuchad Amiti, the Yichud Ilah, Bittel B'Metzias Mamish. Because this dafka, this level, is what allows a person to become completely nullified, not just Bittel Yesh, but Bittel B'Metzias. This is the level of Seiv of Kol Alman. And how does one come to this? The, the drawing down this emun, emun into das is through hamshachas hamitzvus into oretz. In other words, through Torah mitzvus, v'zoyis hamitzvah lasses baretz. Shema Yisrael is the mitzvah to do in oretz, meaning that what we want to do is Shema Yisrael to, to bring the avayel kain or the seva kolalman into avayel echad into the mamale kolalman. And this Shema Yisrael, V'zoyis HaMitzvah, Las Hizbaretz, doesn't mean to do an Eretz Yisrael, it means Eretz is Amuna, to do this Mitzvah of Shema Yisrael, of drawing down into the Amuna, into the Eretz. Mitzvahs are what allow Seiv of Kol Alman to be in a Bechin of Das. So th- that's the V'zoyis HaMitzvah, Las Hizbaretz, to through mitzvahs is one able to, in Amuna, draw down the Amuna into a way of Das, that it should be as if you're seeing it Mamish. And then it goes on to say, Eretz Zovos Chalav Udvash, a land flowing of milk and honey, that this emun of Seva Kol Alman, when it becomes revealed within a person, is milk and honey, milk, which Bepashtus makes a, a baby grow. <clears throat> it's the mother's milk that makes the baby grow. So too, this emunah, when it becomes Bepnimius, causes the midas, the emotions to grow. That the love, the Ava Mesuteris in the heart should become revealed. And, that, and this growing of, of midas, of emotions, is there through a moon and Seva Kol Alman. Because when you have Av and Yir of Mamale Kol Alman, it, that's as much as you're able to handle. That's, so to speak, according to how much you are. You have as much love of Mamale Kol Alman as, as what you are. But when you have a moon and Seva Kol Alman, that's Cholov. It makes the Av and Yira grow to a much higher level. It's a much higher level of Av and Yira, of wanting an Hashem on a level beyond what you are. And dvash, the sweetness and the tainug, the pleasure, like it says, as tisana galavaya, that when a person has this boinus and save of kol alman, that ani avaylei and all the worlds is just a ray and a glimmer of Hashem, and yet vayarm karen la'amai, Hashem gives the principle, the essence to b'nei shalom kreivai, therefore one should be rejoiced. One should feel a tainug of, of, on God, on this closeness to God, mamish. And that's why it's called dvash, honey, that you have this sweetness and this enjoyment. And that's another way of understanding tzaddik b'menasi yichya. Yichya is lashen tayne gupikuach nefesh. Here, pikuach nefesh doesn't mean to save a life. It means to open up a life, to, to be marchiv, to make more life within a person, more vitality, more tayne, more pleasure. That's tzaddik b'menasi yichya, that through the amuna becoming into das, yichya, one has more tayne and pleasure. Where do we see the idea of yichya? being connected to Tainuk, to pleasure, <clears throat> in the Diuk and the Baruch of Ber Nefoshes. Ber Nefoshes, Rabbis Chesreinon, that you created to, to, to fulfill the lack of things that any anyone or any person lacks. Anything that a person lacks for the vitality is Ber Nefoshes, Rabbis Vichesreinon, you create those things to fulfill the lack. And also, Kol Moshe Brosa Lahachyes Nefesh Kochai. So what's Lahachyes that's not just that... that First part of the bracha is that you fulfilled anything that anyone that anything one lacks. So what's being added by lahachiyas bem nefesh The answer is to bring tainuk that we also thank Hashem and burn afoshes for things not just that are enough that are the chesreinim to fulfill what we're lacking, but lahachiyas bem things that we get tainuk from in this world as well. And so to yichyeh bemunosa itzadik yichyeh 
say that more than all the pleasures of the world and all the pleasures of all the worlds is mila b'shamayim mechim alimim chalei chafatzdi that one is re'ei amuna one shepherds and one cultivates the faith to the extent that one has tainug al Hashem that's v'asei toiv and this is the greatest tainug that there is in all the worlds comes to Oiz Dalid and the Alter Rebbe continues that these aspects of milk and honey chalav advash which is how the Yedian Seiv of Kol Almen causes that one's Midas should grow and one has pleasure in Elokos from Seiv of Kol Almen, that still doesn't come no matter how much one has the Vedata Yom to the extent that it brings pleasure and honey, it doesn't come to the revelation. That's going to be La Salava when Seiv of Kol Almen be Malar Tzdeas Havaya, when Seiv of Kol Almen will be Mamish, Bechin is Das Ragosha Mamish. Mashenkin now, the milk and honey is still coming from the Indian of Amun and Seiv Kolalman, meaning as much as a person tries, does the Vyadata Ayam Shavay Slavavecha, it's still a Bechina of Amun and Seiv Kolalman. So it's not like Amunah where the Ganav goes to steal, there there's no connection to one's Pneumius, Mashenkin over here, the Amun is have, making one have Tainug, but it's still not like it's going to be Lasu Lavi. And why is that? So the Altar is now going to explain, because Mitzad Mamalik Kolalman, you could have good and bad. In this world now, there are ups and downs in reality. Mashenkin save of Kolaman could only be revealed when there's only Kedusha. That's why, no matter how much a person has the Vedat Ayom, it can't be like it is Las Lavi. For save of Kolaman to be revealed, there has to be Ruch as Atuma Avimena Aretz. Vainian, that when it comes to Mimale Kol Alman, we see that there are many changes in reality. The world goes according to its Minag and there's ups and downs. Like the snake put the Zuma, his filth, into Chava and threw that to Knesset Yisrael. Then by Matan Torah, the Zuma stopped. Then by Chet Egel, it came back. Then in the days of Yoshua, they served Hashem. Then in the days of the Shoftim Niskalkalu, they didn't serve Hashem. Then in the days of David Shloima, they went a very high level. And then the, through the sin of Yeravam, etc. And so to every generation, there are changes in, in the level of, of Yid and their connection to Hashem. And also in the days of the Tanaim and the Meroim, there's not one time that's like another time. The, every, the, everything changes all the time. And that's because it comes from a Malik called Almen which is a divine light, which has his chalkus, which is separated into different times, different aspects, just like a body. The soul and the body is, has, is split up into the face and the hands and the feet, and there are no limbs, the vitality in one limb is not like another. So too, Mamali Kol Almen, because it's a finite light with, with multiplicity, therefore there are the changes in times. And that's just not just when it comes to the general state of Am Yisrael, but every single person indiv- individually... Sometimes a person has a thought, speech, or action which is not good, and sometimes the opposite one has here who a tshuva and does good things. There's a constant fight between the good and bad. And therefore, says Alter Rebbe, a person shouldn't become discouraged if he sees that he fell, because that's the Seder, that's how times change, and one is able to again change from bad to good, because that's how Mamala Klaman works. Masha'en can save of Kol Alman in order for there to be true Dastra Gosha, there has to be a Biarta Rav. That has to be completed through Chatum Avimin Aretz, which is going to be Lasa Lavi. Only a Lasa Lavi will be the Mamash revelation of Seva Kalaman to the extent that there won't be Tuma, won't be anything bad anymore. Mashank and the other Beis HaMikdashes, there were a possibility for there to be uh, uh, negativity, which shows there wasn't Mamash revelation of Seva Kalaman Ad Hasov. Like Bais Rishon, there were false prophets, and Bais Sheni, there was Sinas Chinam. And they are, the, these two things are false prophets and sinas chinam as the zelu mazev kedusha, that a connected the emuna lemaylem and adas, which is in the side of holiness, which was very revealed in Bais Rishon. When in Bais Rishon they had, there was a revelation of shechina and they had the orin and the kapiras and all these things. So the umazet to this great revelation of elokus is the emunas koizvus, is the false emuna of avirizara that they did in Bais Rishon, and the false prophets. It's all in Indian of false emuna, false elokus, which is a, a connected umazet to the revelation of elokus that was in Bais Rishon. Mashenkin and Bais Sheni that was missing the five important things. There wasn't also such a great as Gabras of Klipa against it. And therefore, what was the Avera then? It was Indian of Sinas Chinam. That they hated each other for no good reason, because of course, if it only, the only reason one person would hate another person is that they believe the gossip that they heard about that other person, what they did to them, because naturally it's not normal for one person to hate another person if he didn't really do anything against them. So that was the Avera and Bayes Sheni that they listened to Rechilas. 
Vezehu beis and all this. Now we go back to the pasuk. This is pshat vidate mashav eslavavecham. That even though it already had the pasuk atar esladas, atar esladas is talking about mamalikolamim. That's why it says Haresa, you were shown. Like we learned that length that Mamalakulaman one could have a visualization of. But Vyadata Yoim, that's now being after the Ataras of Mamalakulaman, now being told Vyadata Sav of Kulaman. To make one's amun is so strong that it's as if one is also seeing Sav of Kulaman. That's Vedatim Shwisil Vekhan. What's the Pshat Bashamai Mima Valarts Mitochas if we're talking about Saiviv? So the altar batach is up that just like the relationship of Saiv and Mamale, that Saiviv is like the Shamayim. Why? Because Shemaim is, is, is round and it encompasses the world. So too, the Dvar Havai, which is Mamale Kol Alman, is within, is encompassed by Seiv of Kol Alman. Just like a person, bef- when, a, bef- when a, the words that a person is going to speak before they, he actually speaks them, when they didn't yet leave him, they're still within him. So too, Mamale Kol Alman is within Seiv of Kol Alman, like the Oretz Mitochas is in Shemaim Mimal. That Shemaim Mimal is Makif, the Oretz Mitochas, so Seiv of Makif, the Mamale. And Vedata is Dafka Hayoim, Vedata Hayoim and Save of Kulalman, that Hayoim less Saisim and not Lamacher by Lamhaba, because Lamhaba it's not going to be Shayach to be able to get to Save of Kulalman. And now he's talking about Ganadin. Before, when he was saying the Dafka less Lavei Save will be revealed, that's talking about Mashiach, Asru Chatum Avim and Aretz. Now he's talking about Oilam Haz as opposed to Ganadin. Because Hayoim Dafka today, one could change, one could completely change from good to from bad to good. Dafka Hayoim, but Lamachar Noelam Haben Gan Eden, where there's a histalshlus of madregas and an exact delineation of different levels. There are many levels of Gan Eden getting atachten, and therefore the Maisim Diburas and Machshavas that a person that became the Levushim Tsoyim, the defecated garments that a person wears. He's stuck with them in, a, in Gan Eden. One, he's not able to take them off because Gan Eden is a revelation of Mamala Kulam and one can't change what one is. There's, there's delineated and separate good and bad. And so in Gan Eden, the Machshav Adibar Maisa, the Levushim Tsoyim that a person put on this world, one can't take off. It's like one can't get rid of it in, in Gan Eden. It's as if one is bound up by a sock, by a, by a sackcloth. And the only thing that could get rid of these these fecal garments as kafakela, as the different punishments that are given to get rid of this connection a person has in Elam Haba to the bad. Today, in this world, one could still come to change that one could be mevarer and could completely elevate the, the Ra within a person's, within oneself through Amun and Seva Kol Amun and through Das. And how do you get to Seva Kol Amun? Like the Pasuk says, that Atzmus gives to her mitzvahs. They need of Seva Kol Amun. And through doing that, one comes to the Vedat Ayim, Kevai Olikim, Havai is Gilui, and Olikim is Tzimtzum, that just like in Mamala Kol Amun, there's revelation and there's Tzimtzum, Elias and Eridus, Sotan Seiv of Kulam, and there's Havai and Elikim. Havai, which is the revelation of Seiv and Elikim, is the Hester and the Tzimtzum of Zelumaze. And so Tzarch Lios, you have to have the Vedati Meshwais Levavecha to come to this Kafinus Hapcha in order to be able to come to that state of Ezrucha Tum Avmina Aretz, and through that will be Malarz Deus Havaya, and the land will be appeased of its sin, meaning that this Dainus will be turned into Zochias. And then the Alter Rebbe adds in the parentheses a very beautiful vart that we know that in Kriyashma the Ayin and the Dalit of the Shema and the Echad are big, which spells aid, to be a witness to Hashem. And we know the Torah says in Parshas Vayikra, Vahu aid oira oyoda. He was a witness and he saw or knew. And so the Alter Rebbe says that that's the aidus of Kriyashma, is the oira, if he saw, is Atares Ladas, is, mama, is, is the seeing Mamalikol Amen. And Oira O Yoda, Yoda is Vedata Yoim Ashvaislavecha to come to Das and Save of Kolaman. And through these two things, one becomes an aid, Atem Eidai, we become the Aidim, the witnesses of Hashem's existence. And another hint to this idea, the Alter says that we know that the Ayin of the Shema is big, and Ayin means seeing, which is Hares Ladas, which is visualizing Mamalik Laman, just Sumar Menechem and see God. Just like you could see your own soul and your flesh. And Shema, the word Shema means to understand, Lashon Havana. And that is the Indian of Yadata Hayoy, to come to understand. And that's Pshat Shnaim Edom Yokum Dover, the two witnesses. Edus, 
is the same letters as Deois, Shnaim Edim is Oira Oyoda, which is these two Bechinis of Mamal and Soivev, and Alideza Yokum Dover, which is the Dvar Havaya that will be fulfilled and will be revealed, Sev Kolaman, in it through the Samuna, and that's the Dalit of the big Dalit of Echad, that the Dvar Havaya will have a revelation of Sev Kolaman through the Amuna of the Mamali Kolaman and Soivev, Oira Yoda, Ataresa, and Vedata Yoim.